now where you almost feel you could jump into the F-16 and fly it. This time on New Media News, boys and their toys. Yeah, we do come here and we drink a lot of beer and we do eat really badly all weekend, but it's, it's mostly to play the game. Technology and testosterone will have the latest. I hear it's actually a lot of fun. Remember Clue? I must say, this is rather difficult. We'll show you a new twist on an old favorite. I think you're gonna like this one. Oh yeah, Bull. Oh wait, no. Oops. Oh my goodness. All that plus a little Apple II history, hot links, and of course your email. New Media News. We're bringing technology home. Hi, I'm Suzanne Shaw. I'm Stan Bunger. Rick Spence is on assignment this time. You know, one of the knocks on computer games is that they can turn people into zombies just staring at computer screens for hours at a time. You know the look. I've seen it on my six-year-old. <laughs> well, now, hang on. <laughs> Video games don't have to be like that all the time. There are lots of multiplayer games now where people can get together and play online so they can all look like this simultaneously. <laughs> That's right. Well, I think we're going to have to leave it to Rick to show us how people can actually play the games and have normal human interaction at the same time. Serpent 31, engaged defensive. Bullseye 270, 60 miles. Angels 1. Okay, yeah, Bigfoot 34 from 2, Angels 13, climbing to 20. Now, those are the typical faces you might see at an arcade, but we're not at an arcade this time. We're in Stockton, California. It's about an hour and a half drive from our studios in San Jose, and we found one of the most sophisticated flight simulation clubs operating out of the basement in this house. This is the virtual air base of the Delta Hawks, the ultimate flight simulation club. One week in a month, these guys get together and fly cooperative missions against the computer, not just for a few hours on Saturday, but for the whole weekend. What makes this group happen is that we normally fly together and we go after a common foe. RTV. Jeffrey Babineau, or Rhino as he's called, hosts the group in his basement every month. He provides the network and the pilots bring their own PCs. Playing over a local area network is a real treat for Jeff, who remembers the early days of multiplayer flight sims. That's good. That's when we had 2,400 baud modems, we hooked it up, and then we were watching the thing, and it's like, hey, did you launch a missile yet? It's like, uh, yeah. Said, Where's it at? It's like, well, hold on. It's almost left my wing. <laughs> you know, and it was like really, really slow, because it wasn't designed to work over a modem. Yeah, right. Zero, you'll come within, uh, but even with the area. slow connection, he was hooked. You know, we weren't doing hot rods anymore, and we weren't doing motorcycles anymore, or racing, or any of that. This became that hobby, and it was a lot safer, too. Now Jeff and the Delta Hawks fly cooperative missions in real time. I'm going to try to catch up with the pack. They've even rigged up CB radios, so pilots can stay in constant communication simply by touching a button on the joystick. Pretty much quick and dirty, easy, almost totally off-the-shelf setup that you could buy. A little bit of soldering and set yourself up with a radio and a headset. Oh, I think somebody just dusted him. Being a member of the Delta Hawks requires a bit of technical expertise, but mostly it's a time and a financial commitment to stay current with the latest technology. Okay, I'm starting to catch up with you, Velcro, and there's a MiG-29 off. And we're probably putting, to say, probably $600 into the hardware probably every six months. The people who enter the campaign mission enter in time sequence and then enter in flight sequence, 1-1, one, 1-2, one, 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 three, one, four. Before the Delta Hawks fly a mission, Jeff debriefs them on the strategy. Not so much on the campaign itself, but on how they'll get as many pilots into the game as possible without crashing the game. The sessions are a bit more casual than the real military. I want you to share radio frequencies with the people in your flight only. Due to some current radio problems that we're having, whatever flight Bigfoot is on will be channel 15. Channels again? I'll repeat the channels again. <laughs> real quick, though. Real quick. For Tango's benefit. You've you got to come here to have fun. Um, this is not the military. And, you know, there were a bunch of guys that, like, wanted to pin ranks on us and stuff like that. And I kind of laughed at that, because I'd served in the military. And I said, you know, I met a bunch of guys that actually earned medals and earned rank. Yeah. And I felt kind of silly, people calling me colonel, you know, when I, I wasn't a colonel. And so I said, no, you know, if you want to put a couple of Star Trek pips on my collar, go ahead. But that's about as close as I'll go. Uh, it's just a great escape, I think. I think it's like once a month you get away and 
de-stress and do something you could never do otherwise. <laughs> it's kind of just a getaway, I think. Besides a getaway, the game is incredibly in-depth and accurate, and it can take months to master. So you'll need to learn how to avoid stand missile attacks, engage bandits, basically bomb stuff. It's not really a problem. It's all here, 27 chapters, easy reading. I spent some time learning the ropes, and basically I was target practice for the other guys. And see, so you've got a missile launch warning. Okay. And that means that uh, some bad guy, me, has fired on you. And here comes the shot. It's going to hit you. Boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very nice. Oh, no, that's true. But eventually they humored me and helped okay, me shoot on. down a plane. Get a little closer. Here I come. Oh, you got me. Oh, yeah. Boom. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That's got to hurt. And maybe that's what makes the club so much fun. Everybody is working as a team. There's not a lot of one-upmanship. They all just want to be better pilots and fly as a team. Yeah. You bring it around that way. There you go, very gently. It's only a game, but when they make it back to base alive, the memories are very real. In this game, I remember uh, Dan got shot up really bad, and he lost all of his avionics, had no idea how to get home. So I got a visual tally on him, and I'm like, hey, you know, stay on my wing and I'll take you back to the air base because he had no way to get back. He had lost everything. So, you know, there he was and he's, you know, 20,000 feet in the sky and he has no way to get home. I pick him up and then he follows me in and I said, okay, you got a visual on the air base. He goes, yeah, I got it. Thanks. And he goes in and he lands and, you know, he lives. That was me. Do a victory roll. Cool. I couldn't help notice an amazing dearth of women. <laughs> I noticed the same thing. Well, you know, Rick and, and our cameraman, Brian Cardello, who shot this story, say this is kind of like the boys' club. You know, maybe it's a 90s equivalent of poker night. Well, it does look like fun, but not to get too deeply into this, how do they know that everything's going to work every time they get together? And these are computers, after all. We know the problems. I think one of the things they, they told Rick is that they really enjoy the tinkering. They like yeah. to get together, and each time they, they gather, they fool around, they upgrade, they install. Sort of like hot rod guys or model airplane clubs. Yeah, and women would ruin it if they were there. <laughs> I guess that may be the story. We'll be back.